Eric will tell you. If not, there you go. And I'm going to log into my account. And so once you're in here, you have options to go to two different libraries. You have the global library, which your objects will not appear yet because you need to make them public. And I'll show you how to do that in a second, if you want to. I mean, if you're using multiple accounts over a team, you can do that. But if you have the same account, everything will be shown to you if you're using the same one. So you go into My Library. And you see the object I just uploaded, Test Coin. Uh, if I drag this into the scene, there you go. Um, I believe Ian showed you these tools. If not, they're pretty explanatory. And what I wanted to show now is, so to test collision, you rotate it to whatever you want, um, and then click drop. And you'll see it'll kind of fall. You see, it, I mean, it reacted to the ground, but it didn't react like a coin would react. Uh, a lot of times, you won't need that for your game, so try to use collision sparingly. So here's um, your objects in the library. You have the object and all of the different um, channels you uploaded, and to make them public, you see the eye next to it, turn it to an open eye. Now it's in the public library, anybody can get to it, anyone can see it, and use the resources. This is pretty important, again, if you have a team with multiple accounts. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, I'd like to show you how to use a little bit more complex um, collision. All right, so what I did here was I added a flat in the middle to kind of make it so if it lands on either face, it lays flat. But then I put all these little spheres along the outside. The more collision, obviously, the more it's going to bog down the engine. But again, um, this isn't per face collision like you'd have in a mesh in like Unreal. So it's all based on these spheres that are generated. So it's not too bad. So what hopefully will happen, if this lands on its side, it'll kind of roll and kind of contact each one of these spheres and try to give you a more realistic falling animation. So I'm going to give a coin um, collision so we can tell the difference. And while this is exporting, I'll try to explain the, some of the other features of the exporter. We have animation. I'm not going to go too into depth in this because giving a tutorial on how to do animation might not be worth it if most of you aren't even going to use it. But if you have an artist who knows how to use it or you yourself can do animation, it's all joint based. You want a smooth binding, not rigid. So with smooth binding, you have all the different skin weights attached to these joints. So um, from there, it's all keyframe based. You can use inverse kinematics and other effectors as long as those can get baked into the joints and export it with everything else. Um, you can either export all the time frames in the timeline or a range of frames. And um, again, adding keywords. And when you export an animation in Maya, that takes especially a little bit longer because it has to go through every joint and vertex and export them. But don't worry, it is getting exported. If you have any problems, grab me and I'll make sure it's running correctly. Okay, and so for this to appear in the library, I'm going to refresh my builder. Yeah, and any more questions about animation, if you get to them, just grab me. All right, so I have this new object called Coin Collision. Okay, and I'm going to rotate it so it kind of falls on an edge. And I drop it. And as you can see, it kind of bounced a little bit more. It didn't like fall right onto a corner. Um, let's see if I can get a better drop on that. There. See? So it didn't just like fall like, well, it did fall like a cube, but you get the idea. <laughs> It'll take me a while to get it to roll, but maybe that can be part of your game is trying to get something to roll. Um, so anyway, glad that worked. <laughs> um, so you can also do some neat things, like let's say you have a can of soda and you want it to kind of like stand on its edges, yet you want it to roll at the same time. Uh, something you could do is kind of make like a cylinder of 
collision. So when it hits the sides, it'll kind of roll, but then you can have a cube at the end. So that it like sits flat on either ends of the can. So you can be really creative and kind of make some interesting shapes. So if there was a can in there, you get the idea. It would sit and roll at the same time if it falls over. That's kind of a lot of what Ian did with those um, penguins in the other demo, is they're just like a sort of pyramid of spheres. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for um, some of the art stuff I can show you here. Do you guys have any specific questions? Yeah. Uh, not with spheres. Um, again, the best thing you can do is sort of make like a pyramid of spheres. With um, rectangles and other polygons like that, you have a lot more customizations you can do. Yeah. Um, uh, but once in engine, you can attach them to the joints in wild pockets, but not to a Maya joint. Uh, collision is not, you can't animate it. So you might want to make a couple different models that switch between collision if you want that to happen. Anything else? Okay, um, I'm sure you'll come into more art questions as you continue, so just grab me if you have them, and I'll try to help you as best I can. And now Josh is gonna show you the 3D Studio Max one if you guys are using that.